Hey guys, today, uh, <clears throat> this shirt kind of makes me look like a mime. So, anyways, today I was looking at old journals and things, and I came across this Monster High notebook. Now, I used to love Monster High. Anyways, that isn't the point. So, I remember something in this notebook, and it was a story from a long time ago. I remember that this story was, a, like, a hit story in my class. I wrote it in, like, third grade, I think, and everyone, like, wanted to read it and stuff. So... I decided that I would share it with you guys. So here is an Ellie Capron reading of Wandering Waves. So my brothers are playing video games out there, so you're probably gonna hear some ing because it's very intense. Also, I'm hobbit hearing today. I don't know why. Wandering Waves, a journal book by Cat Hansen, by Ellie Capron. Who is it by? Could you just tell me? Also, I wrote my P's weird. I was, I, was, I was a weird child. Don't question me. Chapter 1. The Beginning. I feel a cool autumn breeze that feels like waves of clouds against the back of my neck. Cat is not the same. She's been this way ever since her 11th birthday when she got her own sailboat. She loves it, but she always has a faraway look in her eyes. And she hasn't talked to me. My dad, Phil, said, Hey, Phil, as in... Phil, as in... Hey. I think about sailing from here, Oregon, to the Met- I don't know why, I had a fascination with Oregon when I was younger. I loved Oregon and now it just scares me because Portland just scares me. Uh, I think about sailing from here, Oregon, to the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt. Why would you do that? A long ride indeed. I bet I could do it. Dinner, Mom said as my brother Justin ran up to my parents, telling them he had to go potty. As I ate my corn, my gray eyes shifted to the sea as the waves looked as if they were wandering away. Hey, <laughs> reference to the title. The next morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. <sighs> we're getting really crazy over here. I run down the stairs and I jump right into the sailboat. An hour later, I hear a noise. Cat, why are you awake at six o'clock and sailing? You know you can't sail at this time because the sail won't blow. Phil said, worried. Why would the sail not blow? Like, there's probably some wind at 6 a.m. Doesn't matter what time it is. As long as there's wind, I think you should be fine. As I got out of the sailboat, I saw those wandering waves again. I wonder if they meant something. The wandering waves, well... Wandered away. Good alliteration there, Lil Ellie. The sad look in my gray eyes <laughs> turned to sparkling silver. <laughs> and that was when it hit me. That those waves were beckoning me to come to them. I'll get you, wandering waves! As I bolted back to the boat, I passed it and ran to the waves. Cat! <laughs> Phil said dramatically. I splashed into the waves as my sparkling eyes beamed from my reflection in the water. Soon I felt something curl around me as I was beside the gigantic wave, and then I noticed a wave tunnel was surrounding my body. Oh, no! Ooh, chapter two. Getting serious. The curling dead? I was afraid. The wave that curled over me wasn't that big, and I was 11, but I wasn't a good swimmer. Don't worry about it. I didn't learn how to ride a bike until I was like nine. After the wave, the water was shallow and I could walk back to the dock. That's kind of, that would be cold. Like, getting a wave to just go over you at six in the morning in Oregon. <laughs> Ugh. I walked to the house and it was eight o'clock. She was under those waves for like two hours? Breakfast time. 
Have some pancakes, Mom said. We're going to Seaside. I wish I could ask her if I could take the sailboat apart and reassemble it when we got to Seaside, but I knew I couldn't talk. I'd spent almost a year without talking, and I don't want to speak again until I'm a full-grown adult. When I have to talk. Same. Come on, cat, Justin said. Yes, cat, you can bring your boat, Mom said, as if she read my mind. Moms. They always read your mind, I guess. I'm just trying to make this humorous and it's not really working. As soon as we got to Seaside, I quickly reassembled my boat and got out to sea. I suddenly found wandering waves. Again? And took my sailboat back to shore. When I ran on the hot sand, my feet started to burn and the water was too cold to run in that deep. Who knew? I sat down on my beach towel and I rested for a bit. I would soon be able to chase the wandering waves. Not long after resting, the sand cooled down and I noticed my eyes turning silver. How do you notice your eyes turning silver? Like, you see out of your eyes? You don't see your eyes. If that makes any sense. And glistening in my reflection. What reflection? You're not even at the water anymore. You're on the beach. Do you have like a mirror that you're looking at? Ooh, look, my eyes are silver. Hee <laughs> hee. When I got out to sea, the waves beckoned me again. The tunnel towered over me again. But this time, the tunnel didn't go away. Ah! Where did Cat go? Phil said, worried. That was when I noticed all these years my dad actually cared about me. <laughs> what? Alrighty then. Forget that, the water was getting taller. Then it all went black. Ah! Chapter three, lifeguard, maybe? Are you okay? A teen with golden brown hair asked. I noticed I was on shore. I noticed words wouldn't come out of my mouth. Hooray, I didn't have to speak. The teen pushed his hands down on my stomach and then I noticed he was doing CPR on me. I started to spit salty water out of my mouth and saw my dad in front of my feet. Is she okay? Phil asked. GBHT, golden brown haired teen. I found her when I was surfing, he said. I wouldn't just leave a person below the water, GBHT finished, trying to sound heroic. You're not heroic, GBHT. Quit trying. GBHT told us his name was Nick and he was 19. He wasn't a lifeguard or anything. He was just a normal person. Oh, so heroic. I got on my knees and I put a thumbs up. Let's go home, cat, Phil said as he walked away, signaling me to get up and run to the car. She has too much salt water in her body, but I can carry her, Nick said, as if he was a heroic doctor. I finally got to the car, only because Nick carried me. <laughs> Did you drown? Justin asked me. He had horrible grammar, for he is only three years old. I went into La La Land and wandered about waffles? Why did I write that? So? Did you drown? Justin asked in his squeaky toddler voice. <clears throat> she disappeared in the waves, my mom, Julie, said. But she's not invisible, Justin said, trying to say invisible instead of invisible. It's invisible, not invisible, Julie said, correcting Justin. I want to say it howls me wants to. <laughs> Justin squeaky, Justin squeaky voiced. Justin's squeaky voice. <laughs> That's horrible grammar, I said in my mind. No more sailing, Julie said. <sighs> Hashtag savage. Hashtag triggered. I shouldn't try to use hashtags. They're not relatable or funny. Chapter 4, The Zoo. Ever since Julie told me no sailing, Phil wanted to cheer me up. Get ready, cat. We're going to the zoo, Julie said. Are we going to see Lomzons? <laughs> Justin said. They're called llamas, Justin, Phil corrected. In the car, Phil tried to cheer me up with Everybody Talks from Neon Trees. Started with a whisper, and I was when I kissed her. And then she made my lips hurt. I could hear the chit chat. Take me to your love shit. Mama's always got a bad trip. my jam as a kid. It didn't work. Plus, Justin hates the song, so he plugged his ears and yelled. Ah. Ah. 
we got there and a toddler came up to me and he said, Will you please change my diaper? I just walked away. <laughs> see the polar bears justin said excitedly talking about polar bears justin only likes them because they eat humans they freak me out mm. i groaned okay how about the lomzons justin said or lomzonettes justin said sounding triumphant llamas and llamas not lomzons or lomzonettes phil said annoyed Let's go to the petting zoo, Julie said excitedly. Rrrr! Justin made a llama noise as I thought. Maybe he, maybe we shouldn't go to the petting zoo. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm terrified by llamas. When I was six years old, my friend Melissa had a party and she got a petting zoo brought for her. She was rich, <laughs> including a llama. We went to pet the llama and it bit me. Ah! It had a disease and I got it too. I almost died from the disease. <laughs> What? We finally got to the llamas and that toddler came over to me and he had the cops with him. What? Let's pet this animal, Justin said excitedly. She didn't change my diaper. The toddler told the the toddler told the cops. Oh jeez. Chapter 5, The Cops. Well, that wasn't very nice of her. Girl, say you're sorry for not changing this boy's diaper. The cop said as he scolded me. Oh, geez, I'm getting scolded by a cop because they didn't change a boy toddler's diaper. Does he even have parents? Tell him sorry, the cop yelled. I'm sorry, I said like I was being sarcastic. I don't know why I even have to change a boy's diaper anyway, I said annoyed. What? She talked? She wasn't supposed to talk. What? Come on, cat. Pet the Lomzons. Oh, yeah, when I said I'm sorry, I didn't say it. I wrote it on a rubber band in my brunette hair with a sharpie in my pocket from my tan leather coat from under the seat. <laughs> what? I really don't know why anyone would leave a perfectly good coat just, well, under the sea. Back to that topic, uh, how did she say this like she was being sarcastic? Uh, if she wrote it on a rubber band that was in her brunette hair with a sharpie in her pocket from her tan leather jacket from under the sea. What? When the cop left, Justin pet one of the llamas. I bulked up and pet one. It didn't bite. Let's pet this is Lomzon, Justin said excitedly. This one is cute, Julie said. I pet the llama. <coughs> I screamed. The llama bit me and Julie called 911. My 11-year-old baby got bitten by a rabid Lomzon. Oops, I mean a diseased llama, Julie told the cops. The zoo north of Oregon. Julie said, come quick, her eyes are getting blotchy, Julie finished. <laughs> Soon, the ambulance came and they placed me on the gurney. Really? Really? How are you feeling, Julie said, worried. Oh, blah, 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 I said. My eyes got super blotchy and I fell asleep. It was 1237. <laughs> and then this lovely picture of her blotchy eyes. What are her bangs? I remember I wanted bangs just like that when I was a kid. Don't question little Ellie. Chapter 6, The Hospital. I woke up. It was 1.52. Where am I? I asked myself as a blur walked across the floor. At the hospital, honey, Julie, I think, said, even though I whispered it to myself. Why is Sissy's eyeballs so scary? Justin asked. She got bit by a llama that had a disease, Justin, Julie answered. A what? A llama. What? A llama! Oh, you mean a Lomzon. Oops, I mean a Lomzonette. You can only tell the difference of Lomzons and Lomzonettes if you're just, well, born with it, Justin said, not making any sense. Justin is the best person in this story. As I looked out the window of the hospital, I saw the wandering waves. Oh, come on, not the wandering waves. Why? Glistening in the bright sun. I can see where this is going. Why are you smiles? Justin asked as I noticed that I was smiling dreamily as a guy on the beach played with his beautiful German shepherd. 
All right, so now she has G, G, what is it called? GBHT, that was like her little heroic mini romance. And now she's got this guy with the German Shepherd. All right, no reason, I said as I noticed I talked. Was something happening to me? The doctor said she should be okay now, so she can leave and do normal things as long as she feels okay, the nurse said as she walked in. Do you feel better, Kat? Julie said, obviously noticing that I was talking now. Definitely. I wouldn't want to miss my birthday tomorrow, I answered, remembering my birthday was on the 7th. Okay, let's go, Julie said as we walked out the door. Mom, can we go down to the beach? I asked Julie. Um, sure, she answered. As we got to the beach, I ran up to the guy I was staring at. Hey, I'm Jake. What's your name? He said. Hey, I'm Kat, I answered, worried I sounded weird. My birthday is tomorrow. What a good little icebreaker. Hi, what's your name? Cat. My birthday's tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> I also love you. <laughs> Let's get married. Cool. Are you coming to the beach? Yes, I'm sure, I said, even though I wasn't sure. Bye. Meet me here tomorrow, he said, leaving. That was a uh, derpy little introduction. Chapter 7, my birthday. <laughs> As I woke up, I secretly headed to the beach by myself. It was dawn. Hey, Cat. Jake said. Sup, I said, trying to sound cool. <laughs> that is so me. Here, happy birthday, Jake said, pulling a neatly wrapped present from behind his back. What the heck? You just introduced yourself, and I was like, here's a present, ha! I checked out the card that had a surfer that looked like Jake saying, I, on the front. This is what the inside said. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, there's like $20, and then it's, okay, so it originally said, want to wish you a happy birthday, except he crossed that out and wrote, love you, XOXO Jake. What? <laughs> what? I was so surprised. We met 24 hours ago. Exactly. Exactly, cat. Exactly. As I ripped open the present gracefully, I found a pink box with a blue bow on top. I opened it and found a beautiful diamond necklace. What? Well, not what you're thinking, diamond necklace. I mean a necklace with one big diamond hanging from the bottom of a sparkly silver chain. The diamond gleamed, just like Jake's beautiful blue eyes in the sunrise lighting. His hair was perfectly in his eyes, blowing in the wind. And that was when I realized I liked him. Really? You just now realize? <laughs> This drawing is interesting. Is this me? Is that me right there? Am I Jake? Does my hair blow in the wind? And I have blue eyes. Is this person me? What? Okay, let's continue. Come on, he finally blurted out. Let's surf together. Okay, I said, even though I didn't know how to surf. I took off my clothes. <laughs> revealing my blue bathing suit. Ew. Jake only had one surfboard with him, so I guess we were going together. Yeah, he said let's surf together, you idiot. As we surfed, Jake pointed out dolphins. Uh, hold on, I said as I leaped off the surfboard and went to the wandering waves I saw. <laughs> as we got back to shore, it happened. He kissed me. You guys have known each other for a day? Really? You've talked for like 20 minutes. Chapter 8, explaining to Phil and Julie. The kiss was short because I backed off and kissed him back. <sighs> now it was daytime and I didn't notice that until I got tapped on the shoulder in the middle of once again short kiss. What are you doing? Said a surprised voice that turned out to be Julie. Um, it's not what it looks like, I said. Look what he gave me for my birthday. I finished as I held out my diamond necklace. No, don't do that again, Phil said as he stepped into the battlefield. Let's go, Missy, Julie said, grabbing my wrist and pulling me to the car. Mom, Dad, I really love him. I explained. His name is Jake. I met him yesterday. It was love at first sight. <laughs> no. You are not going to date until you're 21, Phil said, as Julie nodded agreeingly. What? I said with a whine in my voice. Yes, you're too young for this behavior, Phil yelled. Yeah, she's like 11? What? <laughs> A big warm gust of wind blew and I saw someone's hand grab Phil's shoulder. Oh no. Oh no. At that moment, I knew my love was fighting back. Oh no. 
Hey, Drake said, causing everyone to turn around. Cat is my love, and no one can stop me from loving her. <laughs> this is so cringy. Why did I write this? I quickly ran from Julie and Phil when they loosened their grip. Keep running, Jake said. I did as I was told and ran down the beautiful never-ending beach. The water glistened like a diamond in the sunlight. The sky pink and purple with orange and yellow. It looks like all the colors are matched in a beautiful ball of color gleaming so brightly. The colors didn't pop out. They seemed to hug you warmly and beckon you to believe what you were seeing. What did you just write? As soon as I noticed I ran far enough, I looked out to the sea. The waves wandered. My eyes glistened. I couldn't help myself. I chased the waves down. Cat, get away! He screamed Phil, but it was too late. Ooh. Ooh, last chapter. Chapter nine, the emergency. Oh, I remember this. Oh, it happened. I can't wait to read this. I was bitten by a shark. I felt the waves tumble over my fragile body as I tried my hardest not to black out again. I hugged my knees as I noticed the shark had something in its mouth. My shoulders started hurting so badly. As I looked down, I noticed my arm was gone. <laughs> I blacked out, terrified. I was too young to die, too fragile and innocent. I had just found true love. The last thing I remembered before I died was thinking about my family, boyfriend, and friends. I am a stupid girl chasing after meaningless waves. I should have thought about these things, about safety, about everyone else. How I could have lived a wonderful life, but I had to chase those dumb waves. I had to die. I guess it was meant to be. Maybe I had to die because Jake was bad. Maybe my parents were right. Maybe I am too young to date. I can't figure out the difference in a possible murderer and a loving, innocent boyfriend. All because I am too young and stupid. Maybe I was the bad one, the rotten egg. Maybe I felt so sure about the waves like they hugged me with kindness. Suddenly, I saw a light. I must have been in heaven. But when I opened my eyes, I noticed it was sunlight. Jake was above me. I was alive! I looked at my arm. It was the bloodiest thing I had ever seen. I fainted the sight of even the tiniest bit of blood, so this was overwhelming. I fainted when I got a glimpse. That's it! The story ends! It ends! <laughs> that was so intense. I am, that was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa. All right guys, I hope you guys liked that video. I surely did. It's almost Christmas, I'm so excited. And ah, I'll probably make a Christmas video. Okay, see you guys next time, bye. It started with the whisper.